Hey everyone, today we're going to talk about linear equations. The definition of a linear equation is actually pretty simple. Basically, it's an equation in exactly one variable, such that every time this variable shows up in the equation, it'll have an exponent of 1. Let's go ahead and jump right into some examples. These are properties that are laid out and explained in a previous video of mine called isolating the variable, and these are properties that we're going to use in this video as well. The fast version of all this is that if I am given an equation a equals b, then I can take the algebraic expression c, whatever c is, and I can add it, subtract it, multiply it, and divide it by both sides, whereas in the last cases I can do those things as long as c is not equal to zero, because I can't divide by zero. In our first example, we'll go through a solve for x kind of question. The idea is we're going to be given the equation 2x minus 8, and to solve for x, we have to isolate the x variable. So in this equation, I have the algebraic expression 2x minus 8 equaling to 0. The goal is to find a value that we can plug in for x, such that the left-hand side simplifies down to 0. When I say to isolate the x variable, I mean that I want x on one side of the equal sign and anything else on the other side. So the first thing I'll do is take care of this negative 8 term. The way that I can do this is add positive 8 to both sides of the equation. And I choose positive 8 because I know that it will cancel the negative 8 out. Running through the simplification, I end up with the refined equation 2x is equal to 8. These steps have made the equation look a bit cleaner because x is almost by itself. So the last thing we need to take care of is this 2. The way to cancel the 2 on the left hand side is to actually divide both sides by 2. Going through this last round of simplification, we get an answer of x equals to 4. So the equation balances and we get the information that we're looking for. And whenever we can say that x is directly equal to a number, we call x a solution to the equation. In this next example, we'll play the same game of isolating x. Solve for x in the following equation, 3x minus 4 equals to 8. The goal is to isolate x, so the first step we'll take is adding 4 to both sides. This gives us the revised equation, 3x equals 12. Since the left and right hand sides includes numbers that are both divisible by 3, our next step will be to divide both sides by 3, and this will land us at the solution x equals 4. In this situation where you're dealing with a linear equation, you can go by the basic rule of thumb, which is to take care of all division and subtraction steps, and then you can take care of steps like multiplication and division of both sides. Like we did here, we added 4 to both sides first, and then we divided both sides by 3. In our next example, we'll solve the equation 1 half x plus 3 equals 2. First, we'll subtract 3 from both sides in the hopes of isolating x, which lands us at the revised equation 1 half x equals to minus 1. We still hope to isolate x, so we're going to multiply both sides of the equation by something that cancels out the 1 half. Namely, we're going to multiply both sides by the number 2. Writing this step down looks something like this. We encase everything on the left and right hand side in parentheses, and then we multiply by 2 on the outside. Using parentheses is very, very helpful because we're dealing with fractions and we're dealing with numbers that have negative signs. So the parentheses here are a really good tool to help us keep track of what's going on so we don't miss anything. Since 1 half and 2 cancel each other out, we get the solution x equals to negative 2 as a final answer. The next few slides just show more examples of this. So we're going to solve for x in the following equation. 3x plus 12 equals x minus 2. Even though there are x's on both sides and numbers on both sides, that's not going to change the way this problem works. The whole goal is to isolate x. So our first step will be to get all the x's to one side of the equation. We do have a decision to make here though. We can either subtract 3x from both sides, or we can subtract x from both sides. It doesn't matter which one you would do, but I'm going to subtract x from both sides because then my coefficient of x on the left hand side will be a positive number. Running through these steps, I get a revised equation of 2x plus 12 equals to negative 2. Now that I've got all copies of x on one side of the equation, this looks just like the problem we did on the previous side. The goal now is to get all numbers on the other side of the equation. So to cancel the positive 12 that shows up on the left hand side, I'm going to subtract 12 from both sides. This will give us the revised equation, 2x equals to minus 14. The last step is to take care of the 2 that sits next to x, so I will divide both sides by 2, which leaves us at a final answer of x equals to minus 7. So when I started this problem, I talked about the decision 
of subtracting x from both sides or subtracting 3x from both sides of the equation. I claimed that it didn't matter, and it doesn't. If we started by subtracting 3x from both sides at the very beginning, even though our revised equations would have looked different throughout this process, we still would have landed at the exact same solution, which is x equals to minus 7. As an exercise, go ahead and give this a try. Start with the equation 3x plus 12 equals x minus 2, and subtract 3x from both sides as your first step. Then run through the process like we just did, and you'll see that you'll get x equals to minus 7. For our last example, we'll take one that's a little bit more involved. Solve the equation 5 times the quantity 3x minus 2 equals 5 minus 7 times the quantity x minus 1. Even though this looks a little bit worse, I claim that it's not so bad. All we have to do is simplify the left and the right hand sides, and then we'll solve like normal. Once we distribute the 5 and the negative 7 over the respective quantities, we get the revised equation 15x minus 10 equals 5 plus 7x plus 7. Now we can go ahead and start solving for x, so the first step I'll take is to add positive 7 to both sides to cancel the minus 7 that appears on the right hand side. This gives the revised equation 22x minus 10 equals 12. Now I want to have all numbers not attached to an x on the other side, so I'll go ahead and add 10 to both sides to cancel out the minus 10 that appears on the left hand side. The revised equation comes out to be 22x equals to 22, so the last step I need to take is to divide both sides by 22, which gives us the final solution of x equals 1. Towards the beginning, when I looked at the equation 15x minus 10 equals 5 minus 7x plus 7, I could have subtracted 15x from both sides instead of adding 7x to both sides. Either way, I would have landed at the exact same solution set, so as an exercise, start from the second line of the slide and subtract 15x from both sides instead of adding 7x to both sides. Going through the steps, you'll see that you'll still get a solution of x equals to 1.